If you'd have asked me six years ago um, about drug addicts, I would have said, just let them go down to the altar and pray through. And if they really want to get off drugs, they can get off drugs. I used to talk about the chains of sin. And uh, after seeing what I have seen now, uh, I didn't have a clue as to what the chains of sin were. Uh, I, I now know what real chains are. Drug and alcohol gets a hold of somebody and psych, sucks the very life right out of them. And uh, if you were to ask me about feeding the homeless five, six years ago, I would have probably said let them starve because uh, if they're too lazy to work, why should they eat? But I had an attitude adjustment on that also. About uh, four and a half years ago, uh, as a church here, we uh, were looking at a house across the street to purchase and uh, we ended up buying it and putting four women in it, thinking we'd do a, a house for women. And we learned at first the hard way all the mistakes you can make. And, uh, but something about that, after a while we started getting some women that, uh, that were really turning their life around and it, it lit a fire under our church. It, it made our church people just really realize there's, there's more to have in church than having church and playing church and, and showing up. There's lives out there that, that need God and they, they need to have their lives changed around and so we bought the other house on the other side of the church about uh, six months later and put eight men in it and then about a year later we ended up buying just about the whole city block not too far from the church and uh, now we have uh, close to a hundred men and women uh, in our program plus we have a mission out on Nebraska Avenue where we feed about 50 to 100 a day um, I looked at different programs and, and what can be done for drug and alcohol and uh, I grew up in church. Uh, I don't have a drug background. I, I smoked a half a cigarette when I was 14 and uh, when my mom finds out she'll still whip me. But uh, uh, I, 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 I used to get frustrated in church work seeing people come down to the altar that had drug and alcohol problems and they'd come down the altar and they'd pray and they'd get the Holy Ghost and we'd baptize them and, and everybody would say, man, it's great, now you're a Christian. Uh, you know, go home and, and we'll see you next Sunday. And of course, by next Sunday, we didn't see them. They were right back out on drugs. And it used to frustrate me because I couldn't understand why uh, the change that was made at that altar wasn't holding through all week. And um, I, I realized a principle. Um, in, a, in drug and alcohol treatment, there seems to be two kinds of programs. There seems to be the secular programs that, um, that use AA and NA and they're very structured and they do a real good job of that but they leave the, the, the faith end out and uh, to me no matter how much uh, uh, no matter how much uh, structure you get or how much discipline you get in your life the bottom line is when you wake up at 11, 12, 1 o'clock in the morning and the dark cloud of loneliness and depression and the past hits you all the disciplines and all of the AA meetings in the world is, is not going to stop someone from going out and using. That's just the way it is. And then I look, I see the other side of drug and alcohol treatment. I see faith-based programs where they depend on the Bible, you know, learn the word, get, get memorized scripture, and, uh, and uh, pray, and just believe God's going to do it all. And I see both these extremes. The faith-based doesn't like the secular, and the secular doesn't like the faith-based. And uh, they're both, they both work against each other, and neither of them really getting the job done right. But to me, uh, the Bible says you've got to worship Him in spirit and in truth. And um, uh, it takes both, and that's what we try to do at New Beginnings. We try to combine the, the structure that's needed with the faith base with God, and, uh, and, and that, that's a powerful force when you get the two together. When you have your AA meetings, your NA meetings, when you teach responsibility, when you teach discipline, and then you also incorporate God. And the way I look at it is this. When Jesus stood before the tomb of Lazarus, uh, here this man had been dead four days. Lazarus was dead four days. And Jesus stood before that tomb. And here he is, you know, uh, the Son of God, all power in him. And all he would have had to do is just take and, and zap that stone away. But he didn't do that. He told the people to take the stone away. And uh, then he does something that only God can do. He says, Lazarus come forth, and Lazarus comes out of that tomb. Uh, been dead four days, he comes out of that tomb. And uh, that's something only God can do. But then you would think, 
as powerful as Jesus was, he could raise this man from the dead after four days, that all he would have to do is go, or, and, and there Lazarus would uh, all of a sudden shed all his grave clothes uh, off, and uh, the stink that was there for four days would all be gone, and he'd be in a nice three-piece suit. And it didn't work that way. What, what Jesus said was, when Lazarus came out of the tomb, he was bound head, head to toe with grave clothes. He was just bound, just leaping out, barely making it out of that tomb. And Jesus told the people, loose him and let him go. And I think that's where the church is let down. We have, we have let God do what he does best. Only God can, can make an, a new creature. Only God can take someone who comes down to the altar and make their life new again. Only he can take what was dead and resurrect. Uh, you can only be born again through God. All the, all, the, all the preaching, all the singing, all the stuff we do as a church cannot do what only God can do. He has to raise the dead. But what we can do is after he's done the resurrection, after he's made the new life, instead of saying, okay, welcome to our church, come next Sunday, pay your tithes and offerings, and support our church in every way you can, and, um, and uh, we'll see you next Sunday. What we find the church has to do is even though they get up from that altar, even though they, they, they get through repentance, uh, a changed person and newness of life, just as Lazarus came out of that tomb, stinky and bound head to toe with grave clothes, these people get off from that altar. They, they come up and they are still having all the anger and the um, depression and the, the habits, the, the sin habits in their life that they had before they came down to the altar. Uh, and the life is there to make those changes, but the church's job is to loose them and let them go, is to start helping them take off the grave clothes. The prostitute on the street, when she comes to God, uh, she doesn't instantaneously start walking different and talking different and dressing different. Those are things that have to be taught. You have to teach them how to dress. You have to teach them how to talk to men differently, um, especially those who have been raised in that where all their life that's all they knew. Uh, men who, who have the street language and, and that ghetto mentality that teaches them that you got to go out for everything you can, that everybody's against you, that, you know, that everybody owes you. Uh, that has to, All those grave clothes that are binding people up, it still has to be removed. And that's the job of the church, to show people that, hey, it's not about them. It's about God, and it's about his work, and it's about helping other people. It's not about what you can get out of other people. It's what you can give to other people. Those are things that have to be taught and learned. And so we call that the Lazarus Principle, and, and that's what we want to apply. Let God do what only he can do, and then let the church be the church that God meant it to be, and that is to get in there and, and help take the grave clothes off. So how do we take the grave clothes off? Well, Paul said, I'll show you my faith by my works. And what we have to do is we have to put our faith into action. Um, you know, it's, it's nice to be able to come to church on a Sunday morning and uh, in a nice air-conditioned building and nice pews and listen to a few nice songs and maybe even sing a few songs and raise our hands nicely and worship. and hear a great sermon that we go home, we shake the pastor's hand at the back door and tell him how wonderful his sermon was, and then we get on with our life. But uh, in reality, if we really want to reach a lost and dying world, and right now, the majority of the world is a lost and dying world, uh, it's, a, it's a world that, that is so full of corruption and drugs and alcohol has such a hold on so many people. If we're going to reach them with the gospel, we, quit, we have to quit playing church and we have to be the church. And the church that Christ calls us to is a church that is called out and we, we, put, we put Christ first in our life. He's not just there on Sunday, but he's all a part of our life. And uh, the way we try to do that around here at uh, New Life Pentecost Church of God is, uh, well, this last Sunday is an example. Uh, by 6.30 in the morning, we're getting the food ready to go out and feed uh, the homeless. We're, uh, we're packing the bus up, and uh, the bus is, is out there on the street trying to find people that uh, want to come to church. And uh, we bring usually 20, 30 people in from the street, uh, and we, we, we give them showers, fresh clothes, underwear. That might not seem like such an important thing to some of us, but uh, 
having clean underwear after you've been wearing the same underwear for a few weeks or a month is kind of important. Clean socks. And uh, then we bring them to church and we, we give them the gospel. And uh, a lot of times with street people, if you just feed them and put them back on the street, all you're doing is perpetuating their homelessness. Uh, what you need to do is you need to make them see that there is a better way. You have to give them hope. And sometimes cleaning them up and getting them a change of clothes and everything, that really works. But uh, we have a mission out on Nebraska where we house about 28 men and uh, 8 women in a, in a mission. And we try to reach them there with the gospel. We try to show them the love of God. Uh, to a lot of prostitutes on the street, the reality of it is, if you were to tell them Jesus loves you, they're going to ask you how much will, how much will he pay. They have no concept of what love means. And, and, and you can't just say Jesus loves you. You can't just tell them they need to be saved. You can't tell them they need to go to heaven and not hell because they're already living in a hell. What you have to do is you have to, you have to show them the love of God. You have to be an example to them. You have to show them love, not by your words, because they've gotten plenty of words. Uh, most of them out there have had boyfriends that have said, I love you, as they're taking a ball bat to their head. Uh, or, or feeding them drugs and getting them hooked on, on things. Um, you need to show them the love. You need to give them a meal. You need to give them clean clothes. And uh, when you bring them to church, uh, you need to show them love. You need to let people, not just the preacher, not just the, the one up front, but the people need to show them that they care. And that's really, I believe, how we're going to reach a lost and dying world is not with words, not with fancy singing, not with special church programs, not with, with great charismatic speakers and preachers. That builds numbers, and it makes everybody feel good that they're having church. But in reality, the only real church we have is when people's lives are changed, and, they, and, they're, and they're set free from these addictions, and their lives are turned around. That is really what church is really all about. My name is Dan McCool, and I'm the Associate Director here at New Beginnings. And what we do here is we're a drug and alcohol rehab center, and we're transitional housing. Uh, we help people find work, we get them on the road to recovery, and uh, it's a six-month program. But people can stay pretty much as long as they like. We've got people that have been here up to three years, and then they moved on, and that's basically what we do here. Well, today we're bringing some homeless people off the streets. We're going to give them showers. We're going to feed them. Uh, we're going to take them over to church. We're going to give them some clothes. Uh, so we're just trying to do our part to help out today. Come on, come on, come on. Good morning, brother. Everybody, we're going to head into the kitchen, but I want y'all to say something to the camera. This is uh, my cameraman. You running it? Good morning. Hey, good morning. This is uh, Touched by the Hand, Touched by the Hand Incorporated. Um, this is uh, New Life uh, Pentecostal Church with Pastor Tom uh, called Taking It to the Street. Amen. Everybody. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you. God is good. This is God what is we good. do for God the street. Thank you, Jesus. God brought us here. Good morning. Ruben. Ruben. Thanks, brother. Everybody. How you doing? Good morning. Everybody doing fine. Ruben doing a good job. I'm glad he's out here with us. Helping us and trying to show us the right way to go. What do you want me to say? <laughs> hey now, thank you for all this. <laughs>